Good evening and welcome to Live with Dr. Wendy. Welcome to our first show. And because this is our maiden voyage, we have a chance to introduce ourselves to you. My name is Wendy Patrick. As you heard, I am a career trial attorney. I also have a Master in Divinity Seminary degree and a doctorate. But before the board starts lighting up with calls for medical advice, I am Dr. Wendy as a PhD, and that is in theology. I am also an ordained Christian minister. I'm going to bring a balance of grace and justice to a discussion of the headlines and stories we will be covering because I have already spent over 23 years as a prosecutor. And on Live with Dr. Wendy, we are going to talk about all angles of stories that matter to you. This is going to be news you can use. Now I've dedicated my career, both personally and professionally, to keeping our community safe for you and your children. I speak nationally and internationally on sexual assault, domestic violence, and human trafficking prevention. I have a background in threat assessment and am the author of Red Flags and the co-author of the revised version of the New York Times bestseller, Reading People. And because everybody has to do something for fun, I play the first violin in the La Jolla Symphony and the electric violin in a rock band. Now you can read the rest of my bio on the website. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter where you can get a sneak peek of what we will be covering each week, as well as the upcoming guests. We invite you to call in and join our conversation. Joining me is friend and colleague, Larry Dersham. Larry, why don't you introduce yourself to our listeners and tell us a little bit about you. Thank you, Wendy. It's great to be here with you on our first show. Uh, just a short introduction of who I am. Like Wendy, I've dedicated much of my life to keeping children, teens, and families safe from child sexual predators, child pornographers, and human traffickers. I'm the current president of the National Law Center for Children and Families, who are the sponsors of the show today. I'm also an estate planning attorney and real estate broker here in San Diego, as well as a hearing officer for the County of San Diego. In my spare time, I like to write law-related books. I head up a salt and light ministry in my church, and I play drums and bass in a rock band with a few of my law school friends. Okay, so Larry and I are both attorneys and we're both rock stars, at least in our own minds, right, Larry? Larry is actually enormously accomplished. I've watched him perform, and he was supposed to perform at the Del Mar Fair before it was canceled, so he is big time. He's just very modest. So tonight, we're gonna to talk about the obvious overriding topic. Um, and first of all, our prayers are with everyone who has been impacted by COVID-19 in any way, whether physically, psychologically, or financially, for those who are unable to telework. I mean, let's face it, not everyone has a job they can do from home. People in retail or in the hospitality industry, they have jobs serving the public in person, Many of these people have been fired or furloughed. And as a result, we appreciate that not everyone sheltering in place is experiencing the ultimate staycation, enjoying the luxury of having home court advantage and learning how to mix the perfect quarantine cocktail. For some, this period feels more like house arrest. But that is the headline and the million dollar question. For how long? Reopening the community. At some point, the pajama party is over and we are going back out. So assuming your clothes still fit, what will this reemergence look like for you? If there were a vaccine today and you had it and the world reopened, where is the place, the first place you would go? Would you hit the beach or the barbershop? Would you go out for a hamburger or a haircut? Call us and let us know. 858-458-1511. But Larry, as the president of National Law Center for Children and Families, how has this pandemic impacted families? I think, Wendy, that it's affected all of us, uh, of course, across the United States. And it's really changed uh, the way we do business. I think things like the Zoom app is taking off, people are learning how to telecommute, uh, most of them. Uh, 
they're learning how to get along together as a family, maybe have dinner together as a family, and how to entertain themselves at home, uh, whether they have a home office or not. And so it's totally changed our lifestyle. We never imagined we would be here when the year began in January, but here we are. And so we have to adjust. And I think uh, some of us are doing that very well and others are not. And my heart especially goes out to those who have lost their, uh, their job or been temporarily furloughed. And we're going to talk about that a little more after the break because you're absolutely right, Larry. That is probably one of the best points is it's true that not everybody is enjoying this time period, although there is a silver lining and we're going to keep you in suspense by uh, saving that for after the break. But in the immediate future, as we're hearing all across the country, we are preparing for what I'll call a great reopening. Maybe I should say a grand reopening because that's certainly the way it's being billed in some states. So there are different news stories every day about the variety of states that are planning to reopen and what that's going to look like. That's probably one of the most interesting and relevant things that any of us could be talking about. And we forget, we in California, who of course closed early, we forget, Larry, that some parts of the country never closed. There are some states that never issued stay-at-home orders, that never closed bars and restaurants. But what we have been following are the headlines. And as I always say on our show, on Live with Dr. Wendy, it's the headlines streamlined. So let me bring you some of those highlights. We've been talking a lot about Georgia. We're starting to ease restrictions. We saw that yesterday. Listen to the interesting litany of businesses that are soon going to be open for business. Gyms, different kinds of fitness centers, bowling alleys, body art studios, barbers, hair and nail salons, massage therapists. So it's an interesting mix of businesses that they're not, not they don't quite qualify as essential businesses, but these are the kinds of places that are going to be reopening as of April 24th, yesterday. Then of course, theaters and restaurants are scheduled for reopening April 27th. Now let's contrast that list with South Dakota, who never issued a stay-at-home order to begin with. And then of course, most of us are somewhere in the middle. And I'll give you the example of Montana, where there is a little, probably a lot less than California, but they're going to be easing restrictions on individuals and businesses this weekend. But what I found most interesting are the kinds of businesses that would remain closed. Gyms, movie theaters, bowling alleys, and Larry, bingo halls. So if you live in Montana and you're hoping to go out and play bingo, you have to wait till next weekend. But closer to home, parks reopened in San Diego this week. Beaches are next. But Larry, what do you think about the most pertinent question of the hour? Who is going to go? I think uh, according to the latest uh, pronouncement by supervisor, county supervisor Nathan Fletcher, he said uh, yesterday, that was April 24th, that the ocean will reopen with limited access starting at sunrise Monday, April 27th, uh, for surfing, swimming, kayaking, and paddle boarding. Uh, but I think that you will not be able to congregate on the beach, and that's going to be interesting because a lot of people keep their uh, wallets and keys perhaps on the beach. And if you wanted to have somebody watching that while you're out there in the water, how is that going to work? And how about the surfers that like to get out before sunrise? It's kind of a joke because <laughs> this begins at sunrise. Uh, so uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. Of uh, course, uh, in the state of California, maybe you're going to be talking more about this, Wendy. Gavin Newsom, he issued his stay-at-home order on March 19th, but it has no set ending date. Uh, however, it's going to be able to allow uh, surgeries to take place, some surgeries like uh, heart surgeries, uh, surgeries to remove tumors and so forth. That will start to be allowed, but it's going to be a phased in approach. And again, for people that are out of work and possibly don't even qualify for unemployment, I'm extremely concerned about those people. Yeah. And, uh, go ahead. 
Well, you know, Larry, that's, that's, exactly, uh, that's exactly the people that we are all concerned about. And we're also concerned um, by the fact that numbers are growing in San Diego. So we have to do what's safe for everybody. It's a balance. In the beginning, I said we were going to balance grace and justice. But now I'd like to balance health and wealth. We would love to have everybody be able to telework. We would love to have everybody to be financially stable. But many people, even those who've lost their jobs, are most concerned about keeping everybody healthy right about now. So as we are rolling out this grand reopening stage by stage in California, as well as all across the world that we've been following, when I say, what does that look like, Larry? What does that look like physically and visually, i.e., who is going to be wearing masks and what kind? Are bandanas sufficient? Are we all on N95s? What does that look like, Larry, for the common citizen going out to the grocery store? I think we're already used to uh, standing six foot apart. I know the grocery stores I go to, they have tape on the sidewalk and they let you in. And uh, for example, in one grocery store, they have you go down the aisle and you have to go up the other aisle. You can't go back and forth. It's, uh, I think that may stay in place, the mask. I think I've seen so many Facebook uh, uh, videos on how to make your own mask. I think we'll talk a little bit about that perhaps in the next segment. Uh, but I think uh, they're gonna start to uh, open up slowly. I know on the freeways, even driving uh, during the weekdays, it's almost like Super Bowl Sunday or Christmas morning. There is hardly anybody out there. Yes. And I know some people, I was so surprised that some people uh, cars and motorcycles were speeding past me. I was not exactly, well, I was just hovering on the speed limit. Well, Larry, I know you're a safe driver, so that's probably one of the reasons they're going past you. But hold that thought. We're going to pick this up right after on the other side of the break. Stay with us. This is Live Dr. Wendy. Good evening and welcome back to Live with Dr. Wendy. Thank you for joining us. We are talking about the way COVID-19 has changed our lives. But because we promised you the silver lining, now I'd like to talk about how this period of reflection, contemplation, quarantine has actually provided some opportunities to think through whether or not we want to make some lifestyle changes. And the silver lining for many people has been that there have been some ways in which a period of home confinement has made our lives better. Now, what do I mean by that? There was a great article in Forbes the other day. And the author suggested that within this grand pause, as we would say in the music world, people have the opportunity to become coronapreneurs. If you didn't hear it here, as I heard it first in that Forbes article. But isn't that true? And we see that every day when we hear these reports of people making masks and selling them online, looking around their house, auctioning things off on eBay, thinking through all of the ways in which they thought they might want to make an extra income stream before the pandemic hit. Now, I understand some overachievers may have cleaned every inch of their house, gotten themselves in shape, and have learned another language. Most of us are not quite there yet. But we've at least had the chance to rethink some of our strategies, whether it's dusting off a resume or thinking about how we wanna behave when we go back into the workplace. This is how and when entrepreneurs are born. Following their dreams, leap of faith, making and selling masks or anything else that can get us by if God forbid you've lost your job. And Larry, there are some famous people that I know you and I have talked about before that made their mark when they were quarantined, when they were staycationed at home during the Great Depression and some of pandemics past. Tell us about that. Right, I'm gonna tell you in just a second, but I first wanted to give you a quote by Bertha Calloway, as she's the founder of the Great Plains Black Museum. And here it goes. We cannot direct the wind, but we can adjust the sails. Love and it. I think that really applies in this case. But uh, going back to some interesting times, we are definitely not in a Great Depression. But people back in the 1930s, which is before our time, uh, did uh, become quite creative. And one of those people, his name was Charles Darrow. Uh, he was a laid off heater salesman during the Great Depression. And in 1933, he copyrighted and later patented the game called Monopoly. 
Now, I know, I hope this younger generation has heard of that game. I think they've repackaged it many times, and I think it's still It's probably a, a video game by now, Larry. Absolutely. The Monopoly video game. It could be. Uh, but he tried to sell it uh, to some of the uh, game companies, but they wouldn't buy it. But later, when he started to sell it himself, it became successful. And Parker Brothers picked it up, making Daro the first millionaire game designer in history. And there's a great... Uh, great story right there. Uh, here's another really quick one. In 1938, a gentleman by the name of Chester Carlson, he was recently laid off from Bell Telephone Laboratories. He went to earn his law degree, of all things, but during that time he took a job in a New York electronics firm. After growing frustrated with copying patent drawings by hand, he began experimenting using electrostatic attraction to adhere powder to plain paper. He won a patent and he sold it to a company. And that, of course, that company is Xerox. He began wow. the photocopy industry in, for the entire world. Well, now that is really a source of encouragement and inspiration for any listeners that have been either fired or furloughed and are looking for some new ideas because this is the time to do it. And if you're home with your family, you've got some great sounding boards with whom to discuss some of these amazing ideas. And it's funny that you bring up board games. Um, I would love to know of our listeners, what are you doing? How are you spending your time, both personally and professionally, during the time that you're at home? Now, if you're teleworking, you're working during the day, but you also have the benefit of not having to spend that commute. We all know people. We all have friends and coworkers that spend an hour or more, most of them more, especially with traffic in San Diego nowadays, on the road. That is time saved when they're working at home, not to mention they're not going out for lunch. They are not spending money on dry cleaning that expensive wardrobe. Now, I, I made the joke before, we have to get out of our pajamas. We're going to have to fit back into our work clothes. But that is time saved on the front end. And I got news for you. There are plenty of people, especially those that are self-employed, that have always enjoyed this lifestyle, but plenty more that are wondering whether or not there might not be something to having Zoom meetings instead of flying everybody into a particular city for board meetings. Or if you work at a cubicle and have a desk job where you're always on the telephone for a living, why can't you do that at home? So everybody is sort of rethinking the way we do business. Um, but Larry, I know that being in a rock band, I know you guys must practice because I've heard you and you're very good. How in the world do you practice on Zoom? Right. Very interesting question, Wendy. Uh, what happened, we were scheduled to play, uh, among other places, at the San Diego County Fair. Uh, we had uh, two gigs there on two different stages. And of course, they canceled the fair for this year. Uh, so we usually practice once a week if we can. We're all busy running our lives and doing our businesses. But we tried to get together to, uh, for four or five hours once a week at least. But we can't do that now with the uh, lockdown. So I had the idea of trying to do a virtual band practice on Zoom. And so I got the guys on the line. Uh, I'm not that good at Zoom. And it was so funny, Wendy. We tried to uh, do some harmonies to some Eagles songs and so forth. And it was just out of sync. It's just because of some guy, some, uh, one of the band members had a slow connection. I think one day soon, this may be a possibility. I know in Nashville, uh, they've got some amazing uh, things they put together with singers there where they send in their files and they mix it all. But they, these singers are in their various homes and it comes out to a beautiful chorus. Uh, so we're still trying to get that squared away. But in the meantime, we're not practicing. I, you know what, Larry, that's, don't, don't admit that on the air, but I know, I know you're practicing yourself and they probably are too. I'm just, I'm just teasing. You guys are great. But you did bring up an interesting point about, um, about what you can and can't use Zoom for. You can't use Zoom to clean your house. And that is something many people are talking about. And it's kind of a joke that houses are immaculate because maybe people have been doing other things. But we also note that when you do decide to go through those drawers and closets, that can be a treasure trove of possessions that you might accidentally have donated to charity otherwise, simply to get the clutter out of the way. So you can bring in your, assemble your home gym, you overachievers. But you shouldn't have to necessarily 
give everything away without looking through it because you now have the time to. And Larry, you told me a great story earlier about a poem that you came across when you decided not to go to a shredding event and instead decided to just have one last look before things you were considering tossing. Isn't that one of the things that we can find during this period of time when we're trying to clear out the clutter? Uh, absolutely, Wendy. Uh, yes, I have a number of filing cabinets, being a lawyer and so forth, and I'm not talking about my law files, so, so you know that's uh, off the table. Uh, but we were trying to go to a shredding event put on by a local uh, bank, and it was an amazing thing. They take boxes of your papers and they shred it, all the confidential things that have bank statements, uh, social security numbers, and so forth. Well, because of the uh, COVID-19, that was canceled. So that caused me to uh, take those boxes and I said, well, I'm gonna have to shred these myself. And I had to go through these boxes and I'm still going through them one by one. But in that process, Wendy, I found some amazing family photos, some poems, one my father wrote, and then so some songs that I've written and <laughs> some invention ideas and so forth. And so it was kind of a blessing in disguise. And what I'm doing is I'm still uh, shredding some of that, but some of that stuff I'm taking and I'm scanning it in. Uh, I have some scanners uh, in my office. I think that's and great. You know, I rescued it. We're supposed to be all going paperless to, to begin with, but I suppose the lesson learned here, don't toss your treasures and you don't know what you have until you act, actually take the time to go through that declutter. Uh, and we're going to sort of wrap up the uh, home stretch here with what I'll call the most unusual accomplishments in quarantine. You know, th this is headline news. This is interesting. Everybody's reading about these stories. One of my, one of my favorites has to be this man in France who actually ran a marathon on his balcony. And no, he didn't have one of those long wraparound balconies that goes all the way around the building. He had a fairly short balcony and the video footage of it, if you check it out on YouTube, it came from, the story came from CNN, is hysterical. And I have to say, he must have some understanding neighbors to be able to put up with this, of this guy running back and forth till he actually clocks a marathon. So people have been making very, very good use of their time. One of the other things though we've, real, we've realized, and this really is a, a wonderful thing, is the bonding power of social distancing. We'll talk a little bit about this next week. But there is very little car traffic, but a lot of foot traffic and a lot of people greeting each other, obviously, from social distancing. But there's a lot more to talk about and a lot more connections being made than ever before when we took each other for granted. And that is one of the things, Larry, that we'll, we're gonna pick up with this next week, but that is one of the things we talk about silver linings. We've really begun to recognize how much we enjoy each other's company and how much we enjoy each other's company in person. I mean, Zoom meetings are great. Many of us have been doing them professionally for years, but one of the things that people admit they miss the most is seeing each other in person. So whether that means getting to wave to your neighbors or whether that means getting to actually be able to wave to people at closer range once it's safe to come out or God willing, once we have a vaccine. But these are some of the things we're gonna pick up on because remember, not only is this the headline streamlined, but here on Live with Dr. Wendy, we also wanna make sure we are both objective but optimistic. So we wanna thank our listeners for joining us on our maiden voyage. We hope you've enjoyed the show, and we hope you will continue to join us every Saturday at 6 p.m. here on Live with Dr. Wendy.